Hello and welcome to the East Telford Benefice online Lent on Reflection. We're on day 31 where we look at Vashti. This is taken from Ros Clark's book, 40 Women. Our Bible reading today is taken from Esther, chapter 1, verses 1 to 22. This happened in the days of Ahasuerus, the same Ahasuerus, who ruled over 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia. In those days, when King Ahasuerus sat on his royal throne in the citadel of Susa, in the third year of his reign, he gave a banquet for all his officials and ministers. The army of Persia and Media and the nobles of governors and the princes and the provinces were present while he displayed the great wealth of his kingdom and the splendour and pomp of his majesty for many days, 180 days in all. When these days were completed, the king gave for all the people present in the citadel of Susa, both great and small, a banquet lasting for seven days in the court of the garden of the king's palace. There were white cotton curtains and blue hangings tied with cords of fine linen and purple to silver rings with marble pillars. There were couches of gold and silver and a mosaic pavement of porphyry, marble, mother of pearl and coloured stones. Drinks were served in golden goblets, goblets of different kinds and the royal wine was lavished according to the bounty of the king. Drinking was by flagons, without restraint, for the king had given orders to all the officials of his palace to do as each one desired. Furthermore, Queen Vashti gave a banquet for the women in the palace of King Ahasuerus. On the seventh day, when the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mahuman, Bistha, Harbona, Bigtha and Abagtha, Zethar and Carcass, the seven eunuchs who attended him, to bring Queen Vashti before the king, wearing the royal crown, in order to show the peoples and the officials of her beauty, for she was fair to behold. But Queen Vashti refused to come to the king's command, conveyed by the eunuchs. At this the king was enraged, and his anger burned within him. Then the king consulted the sages who knew the laws, for this was the king's procedure toward all who were versed in law and custom, and those next to him were Karshina, Shethar, Admatha, Tarshish, Merez, Masina, and Memucan, the seven officials of Persia and Media, who had access to the king and sat first in the kingdom. According to the law, what is to be done to Queen Vashti, because she has not performed the command of King Ahasuerus, conveyed by the eunuchs? Then Memucan said, in the presence of the king and the officials, Not only has the Queen Vashti done wrong to the king, but also to all the officials and all the peoples who are in the provinces of the king. For this deed of the queen will be made known to all women, causing them to look with contempt on their husbands, since they will say, King Asuras commanded Queen Vashti to be brought before him, and she did not come. This very day the noble ladies of Persia and Media, who have heard of the Queen's behaviour, will rebel against the King's officials, and there will be no end of contempt and wrath. If it pleases the King, let a royal order go out from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, so that it may not be altered, that Vashti is never again to come before the king, and let the king give her royal position to another who is better than she. So when the decree made by the king is proclaimed throughout all his kingdom, vast as it is, all women will give honour to their husbands, high and low alike. This advice pleased the king and the officials, and the king did as Memucan proposed. He sent letters to all the royal provinces, to every province in its own script, 
and to every people in its own language, declaring that every man should be master in his own house. It's been quite a party, all told. Six months' worth of pomp and ceremony, celebrating the wealth and vastness of the Persian Empire, contained in all 127 of its provinces, stretching from India to Ethiopia, culminating in seven days of solid feasting in Susa, the capital city. Xerxes is showing off big style. Because he is the most successful person to be the king of the biggest empire, he's made the empire great again. No one's ever been more successful than he has. He's showing off his huge finances. He's making sure they all know that his IQ is one of the highest. They don't need to feel stupid or insecure. It's not their fault that they can't be as great as he is. Some people would say he's very, very, very intelligent. And he will be phenomenal to all women. I mean, he wants to help women. Of course, they all flirt with him, consciously or unconsciously. That's to be expected. And you know, when guys tell him that they want women of substance, not beautiful models, it just means they can't get beautiful models. Xerxes can get the beautiful models. He's a winner for sure. It must be fabulous being married to a man like that. While he's having his feast for a week, his wife is hosting her own banquet for the women. But the king is showing off. He wants to show everyone that he can get the beautiful models. So, on the seventh day, when King Xerxes was in high spirits from wine, he commanded the seven eunuchs who served him, Mehaman, Bistha, Harbona, Bigtha, Abagtha, Zithar and Carcass, to bring before him Queen Vashti wearing her royal crown, in order to display her beauty to the people and nobles, for she was lovely to look at. Just what any woman would want, to be paraded in front of a hall full of drunken men, with your own drunken husband grabbing you by the pussy. Vashti does the unthinkable. Vashti says no. Vashti knew her husband well enough to know what would happen, no doubt. But when the attendants delivered the king's command, Queen Vashti refused to come. Then the king became furious and burned with anger. Let us be clear, if a woman cannot refuse her husband without provoking him to fury, that woman is in an abusive marriage. The king is so enraged that he has Vashti dismissed from the palace and stripped of her royal status. Even more than that, a decree is issued ensuring that all women across the empire are compelled to obey their husbands. Every man is to be master in his own household. They are afraid that other women will follow Vashti's example because the royal household is the model for all households. This isn't the godly sacrificial leadership of a husband for his wife or godly sacrificial submission of a wife for her husband. This is not, to be clear, simply a complementarian view of marriage. This is a license for domestic abuse. It matters who our leaders are and it matters how they conduct their personal lives. It matters that they are people of good character, not only good policy. Modern politicians may not literally be emperors, but nonetheless they have influence through their example as well as through their policy making. The way they live their lives will influence the way they lead their people. Let us be careful whom we choose to be our exemplars. Let us be careful whom we choose to be our leaders. Just for clarification, King Xerxes is also King Ahasuerus. Um, there are two names for him in different versions of the Bible, just in case you were wondering. But back to our reflection. Why does the character and personal life 
of a political leader matter? Why does the character and personal life of a church leader matter? Something for you to ponder upon, to think about. But let's pray. Father God, we pray today for all women and men caught in abusive marriages. Give them courage and strength. Give them friends who can offer help and support. Give them a way out. Lord, we pray for all our leaders to have integrity and compassion and to have humility and good character in their personal lives and in their public service. In your mercy. Amen.